Welcome to our continued coverage of Chapter 4, Chemical Reactions and Aqueous Solutions. In this video, I will teach you about reduction oxidation, also called redox reactions. So, as we learned in previous videos in this chapter, linked to in the description below, precipitation reactions involve cations and anions combining to form insoluble ionic compounds, while neutralization reactions involve H+, which we sometimes just call proton, and hydroxide OH- combining to form H2O. So in this video, we will look at another type of reaction in which electrons are transferred from one reactant to another. This type of reaction is called an oxidation reaction, or more properly, a reduction oxidation reaction, sometimes just called a redox reaction. Two easy and commonly used mnemonics to remember something for the subject are Leo the lion says Gur, where Leo stands for losing electrons is oxidation, and Gur stands for gaining electrons is reduction. Or alternatively, if you prefer, oil rig, where oxidation is losing, that is losing electrons, and reduction is gaining electrons. So in any redox reaction, the reactant that gives electrons away gets oxidized and is called the reducing agent or reductant. The reactant that accepts electrons gets reduced and is called the oxidizing agent or oxidant. To be able to better track and identify reductants and oxidants then, chemists created something, that is a system, called oxidation numbers. These are mostly used as a simple bookkeeping tool to identify which atoms get oxidized and which ones get reduced in a redox reaction. Oxidation numbers are not an absolutely true real-world reflection of atoms' actual charges. It's just a method or tool to help us to easily identify reductants and oxidants. With that said, here is that tool that you should commit to memory. So, if you see any uncharged atom all by itself in a chemical formula, or atoms that are of the exact same element all bonded to each other in a molecule in a chemical formula. Such as, for instance, H2. It's all hydrogens bonded to each other and there's no charge. Neutral sodium, chlorine, Cl2. Again, all chlorines bonded to each other and there's no floating charge in the upper right-hand corner. Aluminum here with no charge or S8. Eight sulfur atoms per molecule, no floating charge. So again, these are all substances whose formulas are either a single atom or multiple atoms that are all of the same element and there's no floating charge, okay? So for these types of substances, the oxidation number for every atom in them is zero. Separately, anytime you see a single atom ion, that is an atom that's all by itself, one atom with a charge, such as K plus, S2 minus, magnesium 2 plus, and so forth here, the oxidation number for that single atom is equal to its charge. And now we get into the big stuff. Anytime you're dealing with non-metals, and as a reminder, this copy of the periodic table highlights which elements are non-metals. They're the ones that are colored in red in this upper right-hand quadrant, as well as hydrogen, okay? So anytime we see any non-metal in a formula, we have to remember the following rules. Usually the oxidation number for nonmetals is negative. Anytime you see fluorine in a formula, again, this is if you've got multiple atoms in a formula. This is not fluorine all by itself uncharged like F2, for example. If you had F2 all by itself, then its oxidation number would be zero. I'm talking about fluorine inside a compound with other elements, okay? So fluorine's oxidation number is always negative one in such compounds. Other halogens, those are the elements in column 7A, their oxidation number is also usually negative one, but they can be positive if bonded to oxygen because it turns out oxygen is more electronegative than the other halogen atoms except for fluorine. So when oxygen is directly bonded to one of the other halogens, it will suck electrons away from that halogen, which sometimes gives that halogen a different oxidation number. Oxygen's oxidation number is usually negative two, except in peroxides such as hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, where it's negative one. Now, please remember, if you have oxygen all by itself uncharged, then it goes up here in this top category. So if you see the compound O2, that's oxygen atoms bonded to each other and there's no floating charge next to them, then the oxidation number for that kind of oxygen is zero. So that's not what I'm talking about down here. Down here, I'm talking about oxygen that's in a compound with other elements bonded to it. Again, you see that 
oxygen's oxidation number is usually negative two, except that you see it in hydrogen peroxide as well as other peroxides. Although in this class, for my university students, we will probably not deal with other peroxides, just hydrogen peroxide H2O2, in which oxygen's oxidation number is negative one. Hydrogen's oxidation number is plus one when it's bonded to non-metals and minus one when it's bonded to metals. And the combined oxidation numbers of all of the atoms in each compound should add up to be equal to that compound's total charge. So these are the oxidation number rules. Let's see if we can apply them to one of my problem sets for my university students. I want you to determine the oxidation number of the indicated element in each of the following substances. Now I'm not gonna do all of them here, but I will show you how to do one or two of them on the board and then let you tackle the rest on your own. In order to identify the oxidation number or state for sulfur, we need to pull things out and figure out charges of everything in the substance. Barium is in column two of the periodic table, which means that when it's in a compound, it will always, always, always have a plus two charge or oxidation number, okay? Sulfur is, however, in column six, so oftentimes it wants to be negative two because it's only two columns away from the nearest noble gas. However, when you've got a bunch of oxygens next to it, that ends up kind of mucking things up a little bit. Oxygen, however, according to our oxidation number rules shown right here, is always negative two unless it's all by itself on charge or it's in the compound hydrogen peroxide H2O2. If it's all by itself on charge, oxygen has a zero oxidation number. If it's in hydrogen peroxide H2O2, its oxidation number is negative one. Aside from those two exceptions, it's always negative two, okay? So whenever I do oxidation numbers, I actually like to write out two rows. I make one row that is oxidation number. I'm gonna abbreviate that as O-N. And then I do another row that is total charge, okay? What separates the two? Well, it's the subscripts. So here, barium has a, an implied subscript of one because there's no number written there. So the total charge of all of those bariums, there's only one barium, is gonna be the same, okay? Because it's really just this number plus two or positive two, it's charge slash oxidation number multiplied by one because there's only one barium giving that plus two, okay? So it's just the same. For oxygen, however, there are four total oxygens in that formula and each oxygen is negative two. So what's the total charge ebbing off of all of those oxygens combined? Yeah, I have to take negative two and multiply it by four. Negative two times four is negative eight. So what I'm telling you is the total, total, total charge of all four of those oxygens combined is negative eight, because there's four of them, each one has a negative two charge. Hopefully that makes sense. So the number that goes in here has to be a number such that when you add it together with a plus two and a minus eight combines to equal the total charge for the entire compound. Now the entire compound together has a total charge of zero because, in other words, it's a neutral charge because there's not a floating charge up here, okay? So something plus two minus eight equals zero. What is that something? Yeah, it's plus six and that is for the sulfur. Or to get back to sulfur's oxidation number, I'm gonna divide it by whatever the subscript is for that sulfur, which happens to be one. In other words, there's only one sulfur that by itself is giving off a plus six charge, therefore that is its oxidation number, plus six.